descended from, whether they were named Adam and Eve or whatever they were named, were all Africans. And how do we feel about what's happening in Africa? I think we need to do a kind of Ignatian discernment. So the situation has put me in peace, consolation, it's put me in desolation, it has challenged me. Does um, where my U.S. government is headed in public policy that affects Africa, am I saying I'm, I'm really at peace with that? But no, I'm not so much at peace with that. That's a challenge. I think a second challenge is, you know, well, how do we evaluate then this big thing called globalization that has such a consequence for Africa and for Zambia? I'm very pleased that my friend Tom Massaro, Tom worked as a young graduate at the Center of Concern when I was there, and I was a very distinguished social efficient will be in this series, speaking upon social teaching and globalization. Where do we stand on that? Um, I learned, when I worked in Washington, D.C., a phrase that a lot of members of Congress have. Where I stand on an issue depends on where I sit. <laughs> from, from my constituency, uh, it's going to vote for me or not, that's going to influence where I stand on an issue. Well, I sit in Africa, I sit in Zambia, I sit in Zambia. And so I stand on the question of globalization, not so favorably. But that's for you to ask yourself, what does it mean for the future that you want? Uh, 2005 is a big year. I just encourage you as part of this challenge to pay attention to what's happening. Uh, the United Kingdom, uh, Tony Blair and his friends, they chair the G8. June meeting, they'll be looking at issues, particularly around Africa and around death. This is the 10th anniversary of the great launching of the Jubilee 2000 campaign. Uh, in September, in New York, the United Nations will hold a review of five years, first five years, of the progress towards the Millennium Development Goals. These are the goals that were set by 191 nations in the year 2000 about having, cutting in half by 2015, the most severe poverty in the world, by providing basic education for all the children, by the whole set of about eight or nine goals. So there'll be a lot of attention. 2005 is an exciting year. And please, get excited about it. <laughs> I would just end by saying, you know, when I look at uh, the public policy issues and what the social teaching bring to that, and the challenges. I'm thinking of something that happened just recently. And I think it surprised all of us. The tremendous, moral, generous outpouring to the tsunami crisis. Just incredible. Uh, globalization is best. You know, globalization of solidarity, globalization of charity, globalization of response. Tremendous. 150,000, maybe 200,000 people killed. Tremendous response. Well, you heard what I'm going to say next. That number of people are killed every month in Africa. And do we respond? And why don't we respond? There's a wonderful proverb, the first proverb I learned going to Zambia, an African proverb that says, I am because we are. And we are because I am. Now, I am my dignity, my work, my future, my potential. Because I belong to a community, a family, a village, a community. And the community, the village, the family, is worthwhile and beautiful because I'm part of it. Would that that could be the globalization of the future? I think Catholic social thought can contribute to that, particularly in dealing with public policy issues about it.
Africa is a huge continent, and uh, the institutional church varies greatly in that continent, just as in the United States or the 50 states, it varies greatly. It varies greatly. Uh, but, so I'll just speak about, say, the, uh, the cases that I know of or so. Uh, for a variety of reasons, and affected by uh, some theologians who were present, some bishops who were leaders, and some of the crises, there is a quite active and vital church, I'll speak about how it implements some of the values he talks about, in Eastern Africa and in Southern Africa. Southern Africa very influenced by the apartheid struggle. By great figures, he died uh, uh, last year, Archbishop um, Dennis Hurley of Durban, who had a tremendous impact uh, with Archbishop Tutu, the uh, Anglican bishop, in the struggle against apartheid. The church, took a good stance there. Uh, in Zambia, the church took a good stance early on in terms of saying, you know, we're going to support the new government, Kenneth Kaunda, the opening president, when the uh, first president, when he was doing good things, and we're going to challenge him when he won't do it. So a lot of those were expatriate bishops, uh, European bishops, but when the Zambian bishops came along, they followed the same tradition. Uh, so, um, in Zimbabwe, they split. They split. Uh, Tanzania, they've been a little quiet. Uganda, a little bit mixed because there's uh, some competition with the uh, Anglican Church there. In Zambia, we have great cooperation. A lot of the pastoral letters, the main pastoral letters come out in the name of the three church body, Catholic, mainline Protestant, and Evangelical. So the church has an active force, yes, for social justice, for some of these values I've spoken about. Does the church always implement it themselves? And that's I think what you'd be asking there. Um, and again, it would vary a lot, uh, vary even in dioceses or so. Uh, corruption in the government, I know a couple of dioceses in Zambia who got into trouble because the bishop was corrupt. Not real corrupt, but at least they're not such a reason. <laughs> uh, don't quote me on that, please. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the dealing with women, about the same all around or so. Uh, except there's this recognition that, that you know a lot of the women missionaries were the real drivers in the church. And we have very strong and very competent uh, indigenous you know, local religious congregations of women. And they're quite strong. And they're they're respected and, and cooperated with or so. Uh, in terms of wages, you know, we put out a, this basket challenges people how they pay wages and so. And uh, one of the members of my Jesuit community said, don't well, hang that on our board. Our workers will read it and so. Well, we do hang it on our board and we do the best we can to meet that basket and so. So there's an effort, there's an effort. The African Synod gave a kind of a direction, 1994, repeated the statement that was made at the, uh, at the Synod in 1971. Those who would proclaim justice to others must first be seen to be just themselves. Uh, when I was ordained in 1970, a very uh, wise old priest told me, never preach anything on Sunday that people don't see you living fully during the week. And I thought there's going to be a lot of quiet Sunday. <laughs> Until a wiser priest told me, never preach anything on Sunday that people don't see you trying your best to live up to. And that's what the Synod said in 1994 that Africa will make a contribution, the church will make a contribution when it live, tries to live out its own values. 